are back on Steel and Vance, and Linda, you and I certainly no stranger to online hate and harassment. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I mean, there are people that are online right now with our names in their Twitter bios to say, I do not consent to Steel and Vance using my, I'm like, who are you and what are you doing? Like, so what? question, are you gonna quit Twitter now that Elon no. Musk's running it? No, I'll never pay for Twitter though. Yeah, okay, well, here's the thing. It's always been a little bit of a tricky place, becoming more so, and now when we had the attack on the Nancy Pelosi, the speaker's husband, yeah. the other day, hit in the head with a hammer, and Hillary Clinton, uh, actually tweeted this. She was talking about the fact that people were glorying in the attack and all kinds of conspiracy theories around it. And she was saying, come on. I mean, the Republican Party has to Renounce take this. some ownership yeah. of the crazy things that are being said. Elon Musk, the new owner of Twitter, jumps on and goes, well, there's a tiny possibility there might be more to the story than meets the eye. What he was referring to was this total fake news story that the speaker's 82-year-old husband was in a gay relationship that went bad. I mean, come But the police on. in San Francisco have gone out of their way to tell all the facts of it, to denounce this, and still it's being perpetuated. It's so much fake news. It's unbelievable. Speaking of fake news, we're not immune here in this country. Well, are we talking about our own Jamie Sale? Yes. As you know, she's the former gold Olympic skating champion. She has become a big conspiracy theorist. This is just one of her recent tweets. It's not a conspiracy theory when you have proof. Yeah, there's no proof there. Julian Assange, the meme on that for those listening to Steel and Vance on the podcast. It's really something when the darling of the Sally and Palche, that whole Olympic dream. And, and following along with what's happening on Twitter, it makes you wonder. And that's why we want to bring in our next guest. Jesse Miller is a social media educator. He is at Mediated Reality. He is a touchstone on social media and fearless when it comes to addressing mm -hmm. these, uh, I don't know, radical, extreme tweets. Jesse, uh, thanks for doing this first and foremost. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jody and Linda. You know what? Yeah, I spend a lot of time on Twitter just kind of sussing out uh, who do I want to get an argument with today? It's, uh, right? it's, a, it's a crapshoot most of the time, but the reality of it is sometimes it is the better argument because you're trying to knock down some of that misinformation. Can we go back to the Pelosi suspect? The attacker, allegedly formerly from BC, somebody went back. I mean, the media checked his online profile full of conspiracy theories and all kinds of weird rabbit holes he had gone down. How much do online sites like Twitter kind of contribute to and help these conspiracy theories fester? So a couple of notes. We have a lot of really good investigative journalists in Canada who dive into far right extremist behaviors. And those ones don't necessarily get as much mainstream, you know, uh, and six o'clock news focus. They are very much when the events occur. And so if we look at what's happening across Canada with the investigations now into the use of the emergency powers and, and, and the idea that there are these conspiracy theories that exist, these reporters really do have their, their, their ducks in a row when it comes to addressing who's doing what online. So Twitter might play a role, but there are so many other darker, deeper websites like 4chan and 8chan, where traditionally the majority of Canadians only kind of hear about it when it comes to the extreme, maybe a school shooting or where the content is now being able to be found online from a live broadcast and, and one of those scary events. So what we have to keep in mind here is that Twitter, like any social media platform, has the ability to broadcast content. And so where a user is, is kind of collecting this information isn't really the, the focal point. We should be looking more and more at how users are focusing their energies. And so this story is so interesting to me because it, the conspiracy pieces unravel so quickly. It's like, well, why were they found in their underwear? You have an 82 year old man who's sleeping at, in the middle of the night gets woken up by an intruder. Why in the world do we need conspiracy theory except for the idea that it's associated to politics? And so right. if we look at any major event, conspiracy usually goes to favor bias. And the biases that are right now in, a, in the play of individuals online is whether it's not, it's gun violence, whether it's violence uh, against individuals or politicians or the spouses of politicians, conspiracy is favored because it affirms bias. Yeah, and when we're talking about online hate and, and extremism or radicalization or fake news that's online and then it makes the leap into real life whether it was the the pizza gate with the clintons or what we just saw like the the smashing of the door to get into the speaker's home and attack the 82 year old i mean 
the the leap from online to real life are we seeing that more and more or are we just covering it more and more I think we're covering it, but social media obviously adds a different dynamic of conversation. If you go all the way back to the Kennedy assassination, there was always the idea of conspiracy, even the idea of the moon landing. But the hard part here is why do people choose to believe conspiracy? And so once you get groups of individuals who become siloed in their social media sharing, they're just sharing in the space that reverberates what they want to believe. And so whether you're right or left, um, I try and argue for the middle. Like, what are the middle ground when it comes to police investigations? Why do police choose over over time to release information because they want to get a full scope of the investigation. But right now, a lot of individuals in our society are so very quick to just go to the idea that because information isn't available, you have to go to the information that comes from a different source. And those third party sources right now are making a lot of money based on social media and website sharing that affirms people's bias in those negative spaces. Very short amount of time left. Well, let me ask you this. Elon Musk wants everyone to be able to pay eight bucks a month or whatever to be verified to get the blue check mark. The problem with that is that then it's hard to tell who really is legit. That's why journalists, you know, if you're following someone, they're legit. Is that a concern that suddenly everybody can post whatever they want? Nobody knows if it's true. I've always been an advocate that every user on social media should have some form of verification. And it's interesting, we see that in a lot of spaces when it comes to individuals in very uh, vulnerable spots like dating apps. But when it comes to the idea of journalists, you know, the hard part here is that your employer is advocating for you to be verified. And whether you are at one station or the other bouncing around as an employee, the hard part here is verification comes down to why do we subscribe to somebody? And so if an individual, even though they're verified, is still sharing misinformation or conspiracy belief, like we're seeing right now with Elon Musk, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter whether he owns the company or not. There should be a structure as to whether or not that person should be allowed to do that on the platform. That would have been easier two weeks ago. Now that it's a private entity, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, people will be able to post what they want, whether or not they have a blue check mark or not. Jesse Miller from Mediated Reality, a social media educator. Always a fascinating conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you as always, both of you. You got to come back. We got to talk more. Oh, yeah. There's always pushback and argument as to why everybody shouldn't be verified on social media. And we got to get no into more that. Right? Use how about real no more eggheads. How face. about no trolls? How, yeah. about, how about just no? Have you got your Christmas tree up yet? No. <laughs> A lot of people are saying, well, decorating before Remembrance Day? Yeah. That's outrageous. Well, the stores have been stocked with holiday decor for weeks. (laughs) Too early. Or is your tree already up? We're getting festive. Next.